To stirring the cauldron. Now, here's your host, Marla Brooks. Hey, Mary Meet, everybody, and welcome to Stirring the Cauldron here on the Pair X Radio Network. Now, tonight's opening song was a medieval dance. It has nothing whatsoever to do with tonight's guest or topic, which is a big switch, but I just like this, so I just threw it into throw myself off, I guess. But my guest tonight is Kelly Spangler, and Kelly is a Salem witch, um, a psychic medium clairvoyant, and paranormal investigator. And she's been featured on Travel Channel's Ghost Adventures. She's been on numerous radio shows. Um, She was a guest speaker for Dining with the Dead and at Spirit Quest with Ron Kolick, and was producer of Hex Education Radio on Blog Talk Radio for two years. And she's here tonight, and we're going to be talking about readings, um, among other things, but it's kind of like readings 101. Now, she's running a little bit late, and she'll be joining us in just a few minutes. But in the meantime, I thought, well, I could talk, you know, for 10 minutes and drive you all crazy. So I, I thought again, and I thought a little witchy music is called for. And since we're going to be talking about readings, I thought that spiral dance song which is rune is appropriate since runes are a form of divination and uh, there may be something at the tail end of that too so sit back and relax and I hope you still have your drinks from Black Cat Lounge sip slowly and I will be back with Kelly shortly Dark sunlight and shining moon East and south and west and north Hearken to the witch's room Here we come to call ye forth Earth and water, rare and fire Wand and pentacle and sword Work ye unto our desire Scourge and knife, power of the witch's blade Waken all he unto life, come me as the charm is made Lady of the sacred well, haunted hunter of the night Lend your power unto this spell, work our will by magic
Bright and shining moon, east and south and west and north, hearken to the witch's rune, here we come to call ye forth. like I promised, and I'm not here alone. Kelly is with me. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Marla. Thank you for having me on the show. Oh, and I've been meaning to for a very long time and just haven't haven't for some reason. So I finally got smart and did it. Uh, <laughs> I, so, I'm really excited to be on. Oh, well, thanks. And we're going to be talking about um, the nitty-gritty of readings and stuff in a little minute because I think a lot of people – don't know that there's so many different kinds and they might go into it with expectations and come out disappointed because it wasn't what they were expecting, you know, that kind of thing. But 
<laughs> but before that, I want to address the fact that you're a Salem witch because it seems that whenever the term Salem witch is used, people raise their eyebrows, and in a good way. I mean, Salem witches are usually held in very high esteem. Now, why do you think it's like that? Well, you know, I think, it. first of all, if you think about Lori Cabot, who was, mm. we, you know, she's the official witch of Salem. She's also, uh, I believe, the first witch shop in the country. <laughs> and, yeah. um, you know, she, and so looking at that, a lot of practitioners in Salem were, you know, taught by her or, or worked with her and, and, you know, we really take pride in what we do. And, um, every day we work it. I mean, every wish does that, but we, we really, um, put our effort out there, you know, in Salem to, to make everybody feel comfortable when they come here because there are a lot of people that come to Salem that are like a little scared, you know, they're like, oh, which is, you know, <laughs> I'm they curious, you know, but we let them know that, yeah, you know, it's not all what you think it is. And we, we're going to educate you and, and help you and, and, you know, heal you or whatever you need. And so, I mean, I think it's great that people look up to us. I mean, I don't, I don't look at myself that way personally, but, um, you know, I have a lot of people that do look up to me, and it, it, it feels good. I just want them to, to feel as high as me. Do you see what I'm saying? I want them, yeah. everyone to be as, you know, uh, as important as a Salem witch. Yeah, well, and also, I mean, you know, just being in Salem itself. I mean, Salem itself has, you know, the good, the bad reputation. I mean, Bad yeah. 300 years ago wasn't such a great, great place to live. But um, <laughs> but now, I mean, Salem is which city, pretty much. And so that's good. I mean, I'm, I'm only laughing at that because a long time ago, there was this disgruntled person that called me a Hollywood witch. Now, it, it's that's like the same. It, it should be the same as like you being a Salem witch because you're from Salem, yeah. Hollywood. But... She meant it in the in the negative thing, and I'm like, now wait a minute, you know that just didn't sound right. Well, that's it. I mean, they do they do call us Hollywood witches over here because a lot of us have done television, like including myself and radio, and you know we we do events, we teach, and so yeah, they call us glam like the glamour Hollywood witches, and it's like no, we're just witches that like to you know kind of get out there and, and teach the ways and show people what we do. You know, um, which is, you know, we do have our secrets. We can't say everything, but no. we'll we'll do a good job at giving you what we want to give you. Yeah, and I think, you know, being there, I mean, like I said, which city people come to see you? The rest of us across the country are probably not that open. Um, there's still right. a lot of, lot of witches that are flying low under the radar to this day because mm -hmm. they're afraid of, you know, getting kicked in the head or something. Um but but they I think what people don't realize is that there's way more of us than they can imagine. And we're all out, most of us doing the good work, you know, but you just don't hear about it because we're we're doing it quietly, I guess, except me who goes on the radio and, you know, makes a makes noise. But you know, most people are just real quiet about it because there's still there's still that stigma attached. I don't care you know, how good we present ourselves or whatever, how many thousands of years of bad press, they stick, right? Well, that's exactly it, and especially people that live in mid Midwest or, or even in the South. You know, if they, if they come out as a witch, they, they, can, be, they can be, you know, prosecuted in, in, in a different kind of way, not meaning, you know, hung or anything, but mm -hmm. the people around them won't like them, and, and, you know, so they have to kind of be kind of on the hush-hush there, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I like the fact that living here in Salem... I can be a witch, and you can be a Catholic, and you can be Jewish, and no one, no one's going to judge you for that. And we're all very open, and we all get along, and that's what's great. Well, I think that's a thing as far as prejudices go and religious prejudices, um, which is do not judge. You know, we get along with everybody. We're not going to out to recruit you and say what you do is bad and what we do is good or, you know, whatever. Um, it's some of the other religions that, don't hold us in very high esteem that come down on us. But I think we're kind of like the open arm people. It's just like, good. Is this what you are? Perfect. Hello. You know, that kind of thing. So exactly. it's just, it's interesting. Um, the, the components that go along with all of this is, is pretty interesting. Really? But um, let's talk about readings. And if anybody in the chat room has any questions for Callie 
Kelly, about readings in general, or maybe about an experience you had during a reading and you're a little confused, I'm sure she can help, um, send me a private message and I will pass it on. All right, so Kelly, there are, like I said a minute ago, so many different types of readings and many people think that they're all the same. So they're disappointed when the reading they get isn't exactly what they're looking for. And then they blame the reader for not giving them what they want. Um, this is fairly common, right? Yeah, especially in, in, like down in the shops and stuff. You know, you have just your average person coming in wanting a reading, and they, some of them might want just, you know, tower reading. You know, some of them want, like, to talk to the dead or whatever, and they'll sit in front of you and you say, okay, you know, let's go. And I start reading them, and they're like, wait a minute, but I want to know about Uncle Jack. I'm like, well, you got to let me know. <laughs> well, I didn't know there was a difference. I was like, oh, well, you know, and that's an example, you know. Um, yeah. So what we have at Omen, we're, we're, uh, I've been working for many years, and uh, we have a list of what every reader does. And, mm. um, you know, so there is no confusion, hopefully. In October, forget it, people are confused. Um, but on the <laughs> average day, they pretty much get it. You know, it, you know, clairvoyancy. Some people are like, oh, what does that mean? Or, uh, you know, clairaudience, you know, all different there are many different readings. Like when I do clairvoyancy, I don't use any, as you know, you don't use any cards or anything. You just kind of tune into the person and the surroundings. And when I do that, I also ask or project myself. And I also do a little bit of uh, remote viewing, which is when I place myself in their home while I'm reading to see what goes. And I ask them first, you mind if I take a peek, <laughs> you know? And, and so I, I kind of do a little combination when I do clairvoyancy. You know, so, and of course, mediumship, you know, speaking with those that have passed on is my, basically what I, my major, uh, you know, talent is. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, being a necromancer, a, a medium, a witch, and a paranormal investigator, that's, you know, my main thing. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole lot involved there, yeah. And, you know, because yeah. um, you do tarot readings also, you do crystal ball mm -hmm. divination, and... Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, some have modalities that you work with, others that you don't. Um, but all right, suppose somebody's walking in and says, um, what is the difference between a tarot reading and um, a crystal ball reading? Okay, well, with the tarot reading, of course, you're using imagery of cards, okay? Um, when I do tarot readings, I look at the card, I see the images, and then I, I read off that. But I'm also using clairvoyancy as well because that's just how I work. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of it is structured. I guess you can say it's a structured reading. It's more for the eye, for the for also for the client to sit there and see exactly what what I'm talking about as well. And they can say, oh, well, what does this certain card mean? And I can explain it. The crystal ball reading is like scrying into mirrors. You know, you don't completely look in that crystal ball. You look kind of on the, I guess you could say the the orb of it, the the outer shell of the ball yeah so so basically you're looking at the crystal I, I, I don't look into the crystal ball like in a mirror you try you look into that mirror the black mirror whatever you choose mm -hmm. um i look at the orifice the, the the outer shell of the ball and it kind of then gives me images and then i i do the reading from that so it's it's, it's crying basically um sometimes i may look within the ball if my eyes feel like they need to and then, you know, work with that as well. But for the most part, I look right over the edge of it. And, um, you know, I illuminate it with candles and whatever. And I, I have a certain client every October, and she's specifically crystal ball for the past 10 years. <laughs> you know, she's like, here I am for my crystal ball reading, you know. Um, but I, I enjoy doing it. I think it's, it's, uh, it's unique. Not many people know how, and not many people work with it in town. And so to be able to give that to the client, I think, is interesting, you know. Yeah, and I was just going to say, it isn't something that you hear about every day. And so, yeah, what a nice treat, you know, for something something different. Because yeah. I think, uh, you know, psychic readings are great, plain psychic readings are great. But again, those are the ones where people say, well, but, yeah, but Aunt Esther didn't come through. You know, they didn't um, right. didn't figure that out. And, and Taro, of course, is wonderful. And, and I I was, now when I use taro i kind of do a little less about it um i'll use i'll you know i may pull a card or two just to kind of get the feel and then i'll go into the clairvoyant thing because exactly I, what I'm thinking, yeah yeah 
because I mean it's good for that. And then I've got this Oracle deck coming out in spring, and same thing with those. I mean I don't have I I created a couple of spreads for it, but I'm I think people don't need to use spreads unless it works for them. I mean you know yeah. look at the card, read the card, you know learn from the card, and mm-hmm. that. But um, it's just it's so different in different ways. Right, exactly. I, I love Oracle decks. I have so many of them. And, mm-hmm. you know, I always tell my clients, because the way I do tarot or Oracle, I don't have a spread. I have to, what I do is I subconsciously throw my cards. And what happens is, um, you know, I read the cards, and then towards the end of the reading, it shapes into something. Again, like, you know, shape-shifting your cards. And right. that also means something towards the reading, the way that my subconscious mind threw it. You know, um, mm-hmm. so it. Yeah, so it's it's kind of unique. I teach, you know, uh, you know, kid, uh, students of mine that come in for tarot readings. I teach them how to do that, you know, because I feel that's more interesting. You know, mm-hmm. it's more personable. I think it's it's something that's kind of coming from both of you. Your energies mm-hmm. are creating this amazing spread. Yeah, and you don't have to go buy the book. And yeah, that's kind of a pun or play on words because there's always mm-hmm. a book with a deck. But um, you just you, you don't have to do that. And I think if you let your mind and, and you trust your instincts do the reading, you get a better reading. You really oh, do. absolutely. I agree with that. Yeah. All right. So what are some of the responsibilities of a client who first comes to you for a reading? And how should someone prepare for one if they've never done it before? Well, the first thing I would say, if you've never done a reading before, I would ask you to, to you know, calm <laughs> first of all you know because a lot of people come up they're all nervous I'm like it's okay it's gonna be it's gonna be fine we're, we're gonna do this reading okay mm-hmm. also I, I I would love when they're not crossing their arms because that means they're shutting me off completely be a little open-minded I say you know sit down at my table it's kind of like having tea with me and more coffee in the morning you know I want mm-hmm. my client to feel comfortable and so the only thing that I ask them is their name and sometimes I do ask for their date of birth um, and then I just go, and I just want them to relax, listen. I, they can write it. They can record it. Um, and so when they when when they are sitting in front of me, what they will expect is a friendly person, a friendly face to kind of guide them. Now, if the reading, you know, isn't exactly great, you know, because they're not all great, right? I will I will then counsel them. You know, also a social counselor. I will counsel them how to work through these certain aspects and, 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 you know, pretty much, you know, guide them through mm-hmm. it so that they're not leaving freaked out or angry. They're, they're actually relieved because they know this is going to happen, but now they know how to take care of it when it does. Yeah, exactly. You know, so, yeah. So that's how, that's how I feel like when first, when new clients come in, I just let them, you know, if they say, I don't want to hear anything bad, I'm like, well, okay. Um, <laughs> I, I, I I guess I'll keep it to myself because, you know, I don't want I don't want to uh, upset the person if they mm-hmm. ask me not to, you know. Mm-hmm. But they they may be there, and I may have to throw another card just to kind of skip that subject, you know. Yeah, um, it happens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know. So, and um, a lot of times when I do tower readings as well, because I'm a medium, what happens is I ask them, do they mind? Because there is someone here that may want to speak to them through the reading. If that happens, is it okay to let you know? Some will say yes, most of them do, and some will say, no, I don't want to know that. I'm like, oh, then, then, mm-hmm. then what's kind of hard for me is they're leaving, and this thing is, like, around me, and in my head, so I have to kind of shoo it away, you know? Um, yeah, because, and, well, the spirit has got to be very frustrated because it probably hit it. He or she probably had something to say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. that's a tough call. Um, got a quick question from the chat room. Ceiling Cat wants to know if you're asking for the date of birth as a way to just connect with the person? Is that why you would ask for that? Yes, and what I do is I work off a lot of vibration. So I always ask, um, I shuffle the deck. So what I do is I shuffle the deck. I say your name, your date of birth. I shuffle the deck. I pull the first card. My first card in the reading, I only do it really towards tower cards, not any other, like, if I'm doing a psychic reading, I, I don't, you know, I don't use it. I just mm-hmm. have them, you know, say they're, you know, what what they're looking for. Um, so then I go in and I shuffle, I pull the first card. The first card will represent what goes on for the, you know, what, what's to look out for or, or something to look out for, basically. You know, like there's something good 
to look forward mm-hmm. to with something to really work on in the next year. And mm-hmm. that's what that card is for, and that's why I asked that. Um, and then I just go with the reading. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's so we've talked about the responsibility of the client. Now, what is the responsibility of a reader? What's the re- to, to give the client, you know, an amazing reading? Um, to you know, they're paying me for reading. I want mm-hmm. them to come out of this reading happy um, or satisfied. Either way, um, I've had some clients that you know, um, as my responsibility, if they're upset. I make sure I get them to a calm place, you know. So my responsibility mm-hmm. is to make sure that you're in a good, happy spot the entire time and to give you exactly what you want for the money that you're paying, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I believe it's very, it, it would be unfair for someone to sit down in front of me and I just blah, 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 and get out, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's not very kind. Um, so yeah. my responsibility is to treat you like you're my family or you're my friend. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, the way and, I see responsibility as. And I think that that's a really good way to put it because then you, I because I think when somebody comes in and they're nervous and they're scared and they always are because you know it, it's funny but I always get the feeling that when people are really uptight about getting a reading um that they really must have something to hide and they're damn sure that we're going to sniff it out. You know, and and that's not yeah. the case. I mean, it could come out, but it's not, you well, know, it's not like we're getting into your head, and we're going to well, try and... People think that we're mind readers. Yeah. We're psychic readers. They're totally different situations. And that's something, that's another question maybe somebody might ask. So, you know, to address that, mind readers are not the same as a psychic reader. We we, we don't, you know, hey, what's, you know, color underwear am I wearing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Or what mm-hmm. am I thinking right now? What what am I thinking? What, what's my yeah. name? Come on. Let's not test me. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I, I don't like testing psychic and, you know, um, because I've been doing this for so long, sometimes if it gets too out of hand, sometimes you get some people in there that are really out of control and I just dismiss them and go see someone else. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, you know, um, that's the thing. Some people will hang in and just do it and not realize. I mean, it's just, you know, it's like a first date. Sometimes you hit it off and sometimes you don't. And if you don't, there's nothing wrong with saying, look, I'm not um, getting anything from you. I'm not resonating with you at all. Um, you should see somebody else. It's, there's no shame in that. Oh, no. And it's not even so much that if I'm, I'm not getting them. It's just they're testing me. Yeah. You know, like, if, if, I, if you don't mind me giving a quick example. Sure. Um, years ago, this was like 2005, I think, and uh, we were working inside the mall. And so um, at the time, we didn't have Hex or Almond. So we're, we're sitting there, and, and this lady comes up, and she gives me this ring, and she wants me to, like, tune into this ring. And I'm like, okay. So I'm tuning into it, and she's like, yes, you know, it's my grandmother's ring. She gives me this whole story that now she wants me to know, uh, tell her some things. Mm-hmm. Um, and I looked at her, and I held the ring. It was very empty. It was very new. It was, you know, and I looked at her, mm-hmm. and I said, why are you testing me? And she looked at me and her jaw dropped. I go, you just bought this ring and you just wanted to test me. Mm-hmm. I said, put out your hand, please. She put her hand out. I put the, hand, the ring in her hand, shut her hand. I said, you are now to get off that chair and out the door. Thank you. Have a nice day. <laughs> yeah. and, and she was floored. She was like, how did you know? I was like, come on. You, you Duh. Know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just no. there's nothing connected to this ring. You know, yeah. so things like that, it does get frustrating. But for the most part, 99.9% of the time, I have a great time with, with clients. And, you know, I love what mm-hmm. I do. It's my career, you know. We well, have to. And it's, well, it's your career, but it's also who you are. And it's what you do. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes we don't ch- we don't um, choose. We just right. are. You know, it, it's that That's simple. That's exactly it. Mm-hmm. That's exactly it. Yeah. All right, so how often is too often for reading? Because there are people that want well, one, yeah, you know, yeah. daily practically. Well, <laughs> I personally, um, I suggest this. If you go in for a reading and things are not unfolding yet, you still need to wait. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, let's just say it's it's gone a month and you're curious, you want to go back. You're going to get the same reading, you know. Give mm-hmm. it about three months. You know, there are people that 
believe me, I get weekly, I get monthly. There, mm-hmm. there used to be daily until I had to stop that mm-hmm. <laughs> because I'm like, you're really gonna drain your bank account. Like, I feel guilty mm-hmm. now. Like, stop. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, honestly, on an average person that doesn't go all the time, you know, every six months is cool. You know, but the one there are people that like to have advice a lot. They they do it once a month. So, I mean, it varies. Me personally. I mean, I would only, I, if I was an average person, I would say every three or six months. But there are peop- people that come all the time. Well, all that's it. Really I was going <laughs> to say there are people who have readings for every single decision they need to make, no matter how insignificant, because they would rather not think for themselves or trust themselves mm-hmm. with any sort of decisions. And, I mean, in my opinion, readings that are not, I mean, readings are not a substitute for dealing it with real life. I mean, certainly wow. they can be helpful, but the bottom line is we need to think for ourselves. And that's mm-hmm. kind of hard when you have these people that, well, you know, should I go here tomorrow? You know, I need to go to the market Tuesday, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> if um, I go to the Tuesday, if I go on Tuesday, will I see him? <laughs> yeah. Well, then you're going to call me back tomorrow and ask if you're going to see him at the mall. You know, like, come on. Yeah, so and I mean, it, it really has happened. It's very, it can be very frustrating on, for the reader as well because it's like the person that calls you and asks you the same exact question every mm-hmm. few days. Mm-hmm. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Come on. You, you, maybe you need a psychiatrist and not a psychic. <laughs> you know, um, but no, seriously, I think it's. I, I really think it's it, that's a problem, like gambling, um, like alcoholism, like drug addicts. It, it is an addiction. And mm-hmm. so they, there are going to be those that do it, but I don't suggest you do that. No, it's, it's probably, you know, as you said, bank account or even, I mean, you if you can't trust yourself and your own judgment, then you really have a problem. And um, it's, it's a little scary then because, yeah. you know, you can't. I, I ask sometimes for people's advice, but I don't always take it. Because I trust myself no. first, you know, and that's kind of, you know, how it works. All right. I've got another question from chat. Um, so I want to know if you notice any difference in your readings and the moon cycles, like is full moon best or, you know, quarter moon or something like that? Well, to be honest with me personally, um, I don't work in the moon with my readings. I just do them. So I don't really see a difference because I do it every, I, you know, I do it every day. <laughs> you know, so it's like, um, I mean, of course, with the full moon, there's more energy, so you might be a little bit more apt to, like with me, I do get a little bit more, uh, you know, spirits around me, or, mm-hmm. you know, my energy is a little bit higher, so I may see a little bit more, but for the most part, I guess that's the only time in the month, like the full moon, where I feel maybe a little bit more in tuned with readings, um, mm-hmm. but for the most part, like... Any other cycle, I, I just don't really notice a difference. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I don't know. It, it could be different for each reader. You know, mm-hmm. um, but that's just what, what works with me. You know. Yeah, I'm I'm kind that of there with you because I don't follow. Maybe I'm a bad witch. I don't follow the moon <laughs> cycles too much. I mean, full moon, yes. Full moon is good. Full moon, I smile a lot. But you know, the rest of the time, waning, waxing. Um, I guess that's why I'm an eclectic witch, you know. I didn't sign up for yeah. the got to do it this way course or something. Well, but, exactly. Um, well, yeah, exactly. We're just, you know, that's why we're witches and we don't have really a title except for that, <laughs> you know. I but, guess. I mean, when I work magic, like if I have to do spell work, I mm-hmm. will consider where the moon is at that time. Right. Um, because that does matter because I'm throwing some serious energy out there um, mm-hmm. for myself or for clients or for friends. So, you know, you want to know where the new and the full is, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, and, yeah. and how far is it until the next one. So, I mean, with, with magic, that's a little bit different readings. Um, like I said, I, I only know I get more hyper and more energized during the full moon. Mm-hmm. And does that go for the Sabbaths too? I mean, you know, certain Sabbaths are, you know, a better time than others, people say, to do spell work, obviously, but what about readings? Well, you know... I mean, me personally, I don't, I don't think so. Um, okay. Halloween time is always fun, but I think that's just because it's Halloween. You know what I mean? 
And um, <laughs> I mean, me, me personally, I, I would only do mediumship during the Samhain, you know, um, mm-hmm. yeah. for, you know, because it is, you know, the dead, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I mean, I don't, like I said, it's just like any other day to me as far as reading goes. Yeah, yeah I never know, followed it either. To, yeah. It, it's, it's, I guess, people's choice. And, and some people that are very kind of dramatic um, in the public eye will say, well, oh, you know, now we're, we're under the full moon. We're this, uh, yeah, it's going to be a better reading. But, you know, a lot of that, I think, is for show. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of readers are out there just for show. You know, they're all yeah. fluff and no substance. So, but that's yeah. a whole other thing. And, and I think that's why people... People are now going after, I mean, now mediums again are under attack lately. Um, yeah, because it's it, weak. It, it never changed. <laughs> There's never a lot go- of TV guys making this happen, let's get real. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, just kind of like witches. If they put too much of that publicity out on the witches, we start getting weird names. Um, it's happening yeah. with mediums as well. And they're like, now they think certain mediums are real, certain aren't. I mean, mm-hmm. well, you know. I just don't, I just think you can't always be on, <laughs> you no, know, you but, but the you thing know. of it too is that the ones that are out there and I'm talking about witches, I'm talking about mediums, I'm talking about, um, anybody in that field, you know, demonologists, whatever. Um, there are so many out there that aren't who they say they are and people run into them and they give the rest of us a bad name and it's hard to live up to or live it yeah, down yeah, rather. I agree with. And, um, yeah, we run a lot, we, we do have that problem here in town, um, with certain readers, um, you know, in town, I'm not going to mention names, obviously, but they're, they, they've gotten in trouble even by the city, <laughs> but, um, you know, for falsifying things and, and kind of basically stealing money from people, you know, it gives mm-hmm. us, uh, who are authentic and have been doing this for many years in Salem and beyond, um, really a bad reputation and, it, and then people oh this is this real is this is this real it's like oh, as mm-hmm. real as it gets <laughs> you know, maybe. Um, so yeah. yeah there are people out there just for the money really um, readings aren't all about money no they're not for us yeah I mean I of course I do it as a living so yes I make money but the way I see it is the way I was you know kind of taught by Sean was you know you're not really charging for the room, you're charging for your time. Right. And that's the way I see it now, you know? Yeah. Um, Because there's been times where, you know, I I would read way longer, not at the shops of my own business, and I wouldn't charge them any more than Mm -hmm. what I originally stated. No, it's it's just really like, I want to give you some some more time, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much that. Yeah, a very old friend of mine who recently passed, he was a very famous psychic out here, um, he used to say there's nothing wrong in making a living. It's when mm-hmm. you start raping people that it gets wrong. But there's nothing yeah. wrong with asking, you know. So it's true. But a lot of people just get out there and make a miserable mess out of it, and then everybody else has to pay the piper. That's it. Yeah. And, and, that, and, that, that, and it really stinks for us who really work hard and try so hard to to. To do our job, to do our job, really, you know. And then there, there comes, you know, Susie May, who just, you know, got a reading from this one down here, and now you have to fix that. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean, I'm sure you've had to fix some problems, like we have. Everybody has, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's really it's bad, and I get really resentful at people who say they are who are. Who, say they're somebody that they're not and I mean because I, first of all I don't like labels and anybody that walks around and has a label in front of their name like psychic so and so and you know that they're not you know that yeah. kind of thing you know be who you are forget the labels just be and do what you have to do but it it gets rather strange now let me ask it something else um, like you said people are sometimes afraid of readings because they think they're going to hear something bad like, um, you know, a loved one or they are going to drop dead within the week or something. Now, what do you do when you come across a case where there is the potential for that happening? Are you uh, straightforward about it or do you kind of... I'll kind of, kind of uh, say it in a way so it doesn't sound like that. You know what I'm saying? 
Like, yeah. you need to be aware of this particular situation. It could be dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. I am not God. Mm -hmm. And there are people that have sat in front of me and asked me, when will I die? When will this person die? And I oh. say it straight up, <laughs> I am not God. Yeah. <laughs> and I say that, I am not God. I'm not going to sit here and, and tell you when death is coming, okay? Mm -hmm. That's just not what I do. Um, no. If I am in a reading and I vision something, and I know it's true, and I know that this is a real thing that should be addressed, I will warn them of the situation. I mm -hmm. will let them know around the time frame in which I think it's, you know, there might be some danger. But to be honest, I'm not going to say, you're going to die. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Because um, I, I just think that's just too much for someone to hear. And, and oh, yeah. they're not asking, you know what I'm saying? Um, I just warn them, like, listen, you know, around this time frame, they, they may be, in, you know, be, be very aware of your surroundings and who's around you. And, you know, and I have actually, um, I've saved some people's lives by doing that. And, you know, it makes you feel good to know that because you gave them the warning uh -huh. to be cautious. They avoided what I was seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of it is in presentation because I think there are times that you have to say things. Yeah. But you don't have to pull a Sylvia Brown and say, oh, he's dead, you know, or something like that. I mean, exactly. That's, that's not cool. You know, like this past October, I had a client come in, and uh, and I seen something exploding inside somebody. I said, I, I, and I need to say this, I said, but just be aware if, if something, if you feel a pain. I didn't say something was going to explode, by the way. I said, if you feel a pain in your woman area, get to the hospital immediately. I said, because I feel like it's uncomfortable to me. You know, and she's like, okay. Well, she came in, uh, I think it was in December, to tell me that the very next morning she felt pain. She went to the hospital, and she had a cyst that exploded in her doctor's mm -hmm. hand. Mm -hmm. um, so basically that cyst could have really done some bad damage to her. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was her ovary and everything, but it was a really big one. She didn't even know she had it. Um, yeah. So it's it's good to give the warnings. Um, you know, being empathic as well, I pick up on pain. And believe me, I'm no doctor. And I always say that too. I'm mm -hmm. no doctor, but this is what I'm feeling, so go check it. Yeah, and that's what they say about people that, that do medical readings. And there are some people that specialize in it. Years ago when I had the CBS show, I had somebody on that specialized in medical readings. And she was very well versed in medicine. Mm -hmm. But she yeah. said right off the bat, you know, I am not a doctor. I'm not going to tell you what to do. But if I see something, I'm going to tell you to go get it treated, you know, and, and tell you what yeah. I think it might be, but don't take me at my word. And she was very good, very well known for doing that. Yeah. And, um, you know, but even even that, you know, you just you can't say 100 percent that anything is going to happen even if you see it and know it, you just can't because something could change it. You know, the universe could change it in the next five minutes. So you have yeah. to be just very careful about what you say and how you say mm -hmm. it. But I think basically um, we're here to give help. And, and it's important that people can get help sometimes and can have their wow. questions answered and can not be afraid and, and you know because a lot of people will come for a reading that would not be able to ask whatever it was to anybody that they knew because it was something oh. either really embarrassing or really horrible God knows but it, it it's an outlet it's a place that it's a way that somebody can get something off their mind and, and find some answers without having to either embarrass themselves or you know feel horrible about it right do you know what's very strange with me, and I want to share this with you, is I have a keen sense of vitamin deficiency with people. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. And I know when their vitamins, certain vitamins are, like, very low. Like, mm -hmm. for instance, if you're sitting in front of me and I read you, and suddenly my tongue goes metallic. You know that metallic taste? Like, uh -huh. you're sick. Yeah. I know for sure you need iron. Right. You know, um, uh, if I start getting... All of a sudden, those second hot flashes, hot flashes. To me, that means that you need vitamin D. There, there are so many different things. My skin stops itching. It e. It in in. <laughs> it's always right on. Like so many times, I would tell them, and they're like, hey, "You're low on this and that." I mean, everyone's kind of low on D, but but yeah. especially in winter. 
But, you know, when right. you're in the summertime and you're picking up on D, there's a problem. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's really unique. I mean, that's very, very interesting. Um, I've not heard anybody say that they do that. And, and, and you can tell them that and they can get a supplement and it's not prescribing. I mean, it's all, you know, vitamins and yeah. stuff. Exactly. So. Just take some multivitamins and, you know, seek your doctor if you make sure that they're level, you know. Um, mm. But it's, it is. It's just one of my strange gifts that I have, and I don't understand <laughs> where it comes from. That's strange. I always thought it is anyway, you know. I kind of like it. I, I actually do. Um, the hour is getting really quick, so I want to ask you about two things really fast before we have to go. Um I was I was noticing through your web pages, and I found that this year you're conducting a class called "Find Your Inner Witch." Is that true? Yes. Can yeah, you? It, it's basically what it is. Is it's also it brings out your confidence level as well. Um, mm-hmm. Your inner witch, your inner beauty. Um, it's kind of to find yourself. I bring you into an alpha state. I have you find your true inner you, who you are, and I teach you how to bring that inner beauty outward and to live like that on a daily basis. Now, by the end of the class, you're going to feel a whole different you, and you're going to learn to walk straighter, taller, more confident, uh, feel better about yourself. I, I have you do daily like little things as far as every morning you wake up, you're going to have to tell yourself out loud in the mirror one wonderful thing about yourself. And before <laughs> you go to bed, tell yourself how much you love yourself. And, you know, to be, it, it, finding how much your, your beauty of being an, a witch, or if you're not a witch, people take this class, it's kind mm-hmm. of finding your inner beauty, you know. And mm-hmm. so bringing out your, your pure magic, the one that the God and Goddess has given you, and, and releasing it outward. Because a lot of people don't have this sense of inner beauty or inner witch, do you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah, um, I do. They, they feel very ugly about themselves, but they'll wear this mask. Um, and you'll find that you even look different um, when you go through this meditation with me. You may have black hair and brown eyes in life, but in your beautiful inner self, you may have waving long blonde hair with green eyes wearing a perfect red dress. You know, so work with that beautiful image and become that witch. Nice. And, and that's with that class. And that's um, done on Skype or FaceTime, you said? You can, um, yep, and also I also do the classes in my home when it gets a little warmer because my, my altar room's a little, well, my altar room's kind of big and I, I conduct classes out there. Um, mm-hmm. But when it's warmer, I do it there. Um, but I can do it on Skype. That's more of a personal one-on-one uh-huh. um, to teach you these things and, and, and go through this you know, this whole thing with you. And it, it, there is no time for me going anywhere from an hour to two hours. You know, mm-hmm. um, it, it all depends on how much more I feel the person needs right. to, to really grasp how beautiful they are and how much magic they have and how to work that outward so that every day you walk that perfect walk. I like that. How can people find out more about it and sign up? Um, they can go on to my website at kellysbangler.com. On the left-hand side, you'll see classes for 2015, and that is the one I have listed. I also do element classes and tarot classes, and I just don't have that listed right now. Um, but, I, you know, there's many different various things if you want to learn. Um, you know, just you can email me right on the website at kellyspangler.com. Okay, good. And the other thing really quickly is um, Spirit Quest this year is all about something very near and dear to our hearts, isn't it? Yes, it is about witchcraft and the paranormal this year. Ron Colick, uh, Steve Parsons, and I are, uh, are running the event this year, and um, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be September 18th, 19th, and 20th. Um, it's a nice weekend. Uh, the first Friday night, we're going to have a nice dinner, and then we're going to do a witch's bonfire circle outside with drumming and all that. Nice. Um, the second day, we're going to have vendors on Sunday and Sunday, most likely just those days, because Friday's kind of a short evening one. Um Lots of vendors, uh, speakers, uh, classes, um, you know, experiments and stuff like that. And at night on Saturday, we're going to go outside and we're going to have muggles versus the witches. And we're going (laughs) to do a goat hunt in the woods. Um, Oh, wow. That's going to be really amazing. And what we're going to do is we'll have teams and then we'll switch off the teams wrong. We'll walk 
you know, run one team and I'll run the other. And then on Sunday, it's back to classes. And, you know, there is lunches there, too. You pay for the lunches. Um, but, they, you know, downstairs in the calf and everything. But uh, it, it's going to be an amazing weekend. And, I, you know, I really feel like it's going to be very successful this year. And uh, yeah. it's going to be great. And this one's just so different because um, we're bringing in some sale of magic. We're going to teach about the witch trials. We're going to teach about the history and the hauntings in Salem as well. So it's going to be really great. On top of Steve talking about UK hauntings over there and, you know, <laughs> yeah. all these different things. Mm-hmm. I love them. Both Ron and Steve, I love them both. And yeah. Spirit Quest is just like perfect, 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 perfect. Yeah. It gets better every year. Out. I wish, yeah. you know, I wish my broom would just go cross country without, you know, <laughs> be, being such a pain in the butt. Anyway, um, we've got to run again. Your website is kellyspangler.com. And yeah. thank you so much for coming in and kind of blowing the lid on a little bit about readings and maybe straightening some things out. And if people want a reading from you, also kellyspangler.com, right? Absolutely. And I'm also at Omen every Wednesday during the off season. And I'm there more often in October. In Wonderful. Seattle. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. I know it's been a busy day for you, so now you can go kick well, back. <laughs> yep, take a shower, relax, and go to bed. And <laughs> do it again tomorrow. <laughs> and well, I want to thank you so every- much for having me on. Oh, anytime. Come back. We'll we'll get into some more mischief at another time. It's always a good thing. Oh, absolutely. Fun. <laughs> and thank you all for being with us tonight. And until next time, everybody, blessed be and merry meet again. Good night. This has been another edition of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Be sure to tune in next week at the same time for another great guest and more cauldron stirring. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without explicit permission is strictly prohibited. Copyright 2014. Moonlight Hall by Kevin McLeod. Licensed through Incompetech.com. 